Welcome to Nebulous. This isn't a complete guide, but this will help you get from zero to dangerous in just a few moments. If you want in more depth guides, check out these channels below, or join the Nebulous Discord. There are several different types of ship hulls to choose from when building a fleet in Nebulous Fleet Command. In this video, we'll briefly go over the types of ships and their varying traits among the group. Just be aware, this guide won't tell you the full odds and ends of ship building or fleet commanding. We're just here building a foundation. However, as more and more videos of this type come out for Nebulous, I do plan on making an in-depth guide, at least, on how to play the game, how to design a fleet, and what to look for. The Corvette is the smallest ship hull to date in Nebulous, allowing speedy or stealthy approaches to the game. With just four hard points, this ship generally has a limited number of roles on its own, but in a group, this ship can become a conglomerate of other ship types. Just as a side note, get used to the roll command when utilizing this ship, but we'll touch on that later. With a berthing and two plant control centers, you can fit a spyglass radar on the inside. Given that the spotting distance is based on ship size, this obviously makes for one of the best scouts in game. Other jobs of the stout but humble Corv are missile carrier, point defense picket, jammer hauler, and scout hunter. Gather six to eight of various designs, and you've practically assembled yourself a battleship, one that cannot exchange fire but a battleship's worth of materials nonetheless. Generally utilized for specified roles within a fleet, the range class frigate can cover on areas such as electronic warfare, point defense, and added firepower. Offering four hard points for the price, it's worthy to consider when considering the addition of supporting elements within your fleet. Do note the extra power generation allowing it to carry both long-range radars and jammers for E-War. However, the pain of being a Reigns is never having enough hard points to do everything on one hull. You'll have enough power to fit the jammers and a spotting radar for the same hull, but you'll always struggle to strap enough chemically propelled explosives to justify its use. As long as you bring this as part of a larger hull, even a hull composed entirely of frigates covering each other's weaknesses, the Reigns can pull its weight. The Keystone Destroyer holds a very niche use. Offering a single spinal mount and six hard points, this ship can carry out various but limited combat roles. The spinal mounts on the Keystone make it very much a min-max state, largely dictating on what can and cannot be done based on which two spinal mounts you take. With the beams, you can become a true Jedi, slicing and microwaving lesser holes before you within seconds. Assuming your uncoordinated drunk GTA protagonist of a helmsman can point the nose at the target. Beams, being simple, only require the solution of two problems. How to cross dead open space within 6 kilometers of a target, and how to survive being within 6 kilometers of your target. As the game describes, the light cruiser is the bridge between the capital hulls and their subordinate class ships. The trade-off being armor for speed, the light cruiser can be vital for flanking or, currently, submarining. Offering 10 hard points, the Vox is a niche utilitarian speed demon that specializes in punching below its weight. Understand that this hull inherently loses to the heavier ships, much like paper loses to scissors. Like any specialized unit, everything you can't solve isn't a you problem, and is instead a skill issue for your team to solve. This sounds like I'm talking shit, but I'm not. 250s are purpose-built to punish anyone choosing a lower hull than you, while punishing you with anyone who chooses anything bigger. True Vox veterans know how to pick their battles, and while Frigg and Corv hunting might not be the most grand of adventures, it can be the difference between holding the map or dying to it. The Axford is the Voxel's heavier cousin, meant for nasty skirmishes with the enemy, allowing a decent variety of weaponry to inflict as much damage as possible. Axfords can operate independently or with escort ships. With 11 hard points, these class of ships can be outfitted with maximum combative roles. Their biggest weakness is their most defining feature, their size. This makes them easy to spot from very far away, and in a jamming fight, the Axford will always be spotted through the noise, from farther away than most hull types. The capital ship of most navies. The Solomon often dictates which way battles flow when properly screened. Solomons often require escort ships to protect them from various threats, mainly missiles. With 14 hardpoints, the battleship can reasonably defend itself as required while offering the heaviest weaponry platforms on the battlefield. Similar to real life, battleships are kind of a big gamble. At the start of the game, most often, 
Your enemies will possess weapons built to destroy battleships. Typically when you see battleships in a game, it's usually towards the end of the match when all of the enemy has expended their battleship killing weapons. By the way, remember to bring jammers on either side of the battleship or an escort ship. Never underestimate how much electronic warfare can help you when playing in as a battleship. But we'll cover electronic warfare in a later video. With that out of the way, you have a general idea of what each hull is. Try making some fleets on your own in Nebulous. If you get lost, refer to the starter fleets to get an idea of what to look for when building a ship. Just keep in mind, most matches have a 3000 point limit and generally are 4v4, which means that you don't have to completely go dynamic in roles. If you're brand new, avoid playing with missiles at least until you understand the fundamentals of the game. Remember to stop by the Nebulous Discord and say hello. You typically can find me playing some matches or just hanging out there. I also want to give a big shout out to Bsod and Baka for helping me develop this video. If it wasn't for them, I'd be completely lost in the entire flow of the video.